like digging into our curriculum this year because it's new with the reading and kind of showing what um, we're doing in math. There's a new math curriculum and how science integrates. So that's something we haven't really done before. So that's why this is more of a deep dive. Um, but really what we're going to do is look at EL, how you can work with EL at home, and that's our reading program. Um, and then what's going on with math. I have some math themes over here if you didn't get to see them yet over in the soy vision. And then other ideas just to kind of work on the love of learning. Oh, well, you can go ahead and grab it. Because um, that's obviously very important. So with EL, this is our, um, it's called EL Education. It used to be exponentiary learning. But this is our reading curriculum. And I want to show you how in third through fifth grade, we split up the first <coughs> morning hour with the homeroom teacher and then the second hour um, with Miss Byrne in the afternoon. So our first hour is these module lessons. And these are whole group. We all do the same thing, but it's really, really heavy in student discussion. So we're reading Esperanza Rising, which hopefully sounds familiar by now. Um, and this book is a historical fiction, but it's all about human rights, and that's what we're focusing on. And so here's our guiding questions up here. What are human rights and how are they threatened? And then how can we use writing to make awareness? So that's our big goal this, this year, and that's all of the Greenway County. So the equity is that big um, purpose of EL, and it's been really great so far that everyone's learning the same thing, the same writer. So that's that module block. And I can talk a little more about that. But um, the all block, it's called additional language and literacy. They go to Miss Byrne for that, just for their really focused reading. And that's for student individual needs. And they do a lot of group work, research, independent work. So that's kind of focusing on their own independent skills. That morning block is we're all working to really work on that rigor and discussion and um, these guided questions. And the afternoon block is using the same text and ideas independently or with research in small groups. So that's a very, very small um, idea of EL, but hopefully that kind of helps you to understand a little bit of what it looks like throughout Wake County. And if you have kids in um, third through eighth as well, they're doing the same style of work. So hopefully that's a little familiar. So these are the three, and this is from the EL Education website. Um, these are the three skills that we're developing. Character's huge, especially in our units, and I'm gonna tell you those in just a minute. But you know, we're talking a lot about the theme of this book is from riches to rags. And so really working on empathy and compassion, and those are some words that we've talked a lot about um, in our vocabulary, and how our students can develop those skills, as well as through their rigor and discussion to respect each other. So um, mastery of student skills is something we always want to focus on, but that's not the only thing. So using the character and then high quality work. So rigor keeps coming up, rigor, rigor, rigor. How can we make this work more? Um, challenging to everybody to meet their needs and not just for some students. So using discussion, um, written tools, and really just developing all their skills together. So that's their focus of EL. So these are four units. So right now we're looking at the stories of human rights through Esperanza Rising. So we have one guiding text for everybody and then additional text to support it. Biodiversity in the Rainforest will be our second unit. And um, we have a lot of books to support the curriculum as well through EL and through the county, which has been really great. So this is our next book. So this will be a nonfiction book, and we're using research to look at biodiversity in the rainforest. And then in the third unit, we're going to be um, talking about athletes promoting change, so a positive outlook on athletes and how they can promote some social change. So we're going to be studying Jackie Robinson and other, um, a lot of other athletes who have promoted positive change. And our final unit, and being the first year that we do this, we're not sure, this is, a, it's challenging to learn something new. Um, we're not sure that we'll, you know, really make it through the whole fourth unit. We have EOGs still, and that's something to think about. But our goal is to definitely finish all four of our units, and they're all really important. So this one's about um, how weather has impacted people. We're looking at hurricanes and earthquakes, which was obviously very recent. So using current events to help us support that. Um, and this story specifically is about an earthquake in Haiti. So how impacting, how national disasters are impacting people's lives and how we can use that to change um, positively. So really you can kind of just already see some of the character development through this program. So there's a lot that you can do at home, but as we learn more about EL ourselves, we'll help you more. So right now what we can tell you is that the big thing is every student, no matter where they're coming from, where they're going, they can always develop comprehension. So really understanding the text, this book is filled with challenging vocabulary and ideas, so understanding and dissecting every chapter is really important. So anything that you can do to support comprehension, asking your child questions about the book, talking about it, and that's why I put book talks, just sit down and talk about the book. If you want a copy,
copy. The library probably has some. I'm sure we have a few extra somewhere that we could help with. Um, so if it sounds like something that would interest you and our students, we read it together out loud, and then they go home and read it again that night for homework. So they, they are having this um, text shown to them multiple times. We talk about every chapter in depth for multiple days. So having those same styles of book talks at home would be really supportive. Um, one thing that we really focus on is quoting accurately from the text, and we talk about this. We say ad nauseum because every day we bring up how to quote accurately. We use quotes, we use page numbers, word for word, and it has to support and justify what they claim. So their homework prompts look like this. Um, they have a little homework question that we glue at the top, and it will tell them which chapter or pages to reread. And then it has usually just one to two questions. It's not a ton of questions, but we expect it to be in depth. So it will say something like this question says, how does Esperanza travel to the train station, and how does she feel about it? Quote accurately from the text. So they find at least one quote to support these questions, and our students are doing a really wonderful job with this. And we're seeing it on assessments, in class. Together, we model a lot of how to do this, and it's reflecting on their homework. So hopefully you've seen this, and if not, that it's something maybe you can help your child develop more. Um, but really, that the, the quote is evidence. It's justifying how they can prove what's happening. And then, uh, so that was their homework responses, and that's a huge part of their writing skills that we're working on. Yeah. I have a question yeah. about that. So are you wanting them to pull the exact quote, or are you wanting them to paraphrase? Yeah, so when, they're always welcome to paraphrase, but when we tell them to quote accurately, we expect an exact quote. Um, so, and they should be using page numbers, so that's something they're all starting to remember. Okay. Yeah, and they have a page, this one doesn't go home, but in their workbook, which is, um, the majority of where their work is, they, we go back to this all the time, and it tells them exactly what to do to quote accurately. So by now, they've heard it almost every day this year. So, you know, we're almost at week six, so they've seen it. And that's, that's a skill that they always should have, too, from here on out. Um, so this student was telling, used a quote exactly word for word from the book, but had paraphrased it beforehand and used the quote to support it. So we talk about in science using evidence, and in math, how do you prove your answer? The same thing as in reading. That really helps them on the um, assessments. We have the state assessments and county assessments because they can go back and underline or circle that evidence right from the text. So there is definitely a correlation, but it's just a great writing skill. So there's no writing class anymore. We don't have 30 minutes of writing narratives and memoirs and you know, um, fantasy like we used to. What we have now is a lot of skills with writing at home and in school. So they're doing a great job with it too. It's really, really impressive. So that's pretty much it for EL. Um, I'm going to talk about it a little more with a science focus, but is there anything about the curriculum, because it's so new to us and it's obviously brand new to everybody else, that anyone wants to know more about? It's going really well, so I hope that your kids are really enjoying it. So science, this is my area, um, is I tried really hard to redo our science curriculum the best way I could to support what they're doing in reading because a lot of what they're doing in reading has so much to do with their science um, curriculum. So the next unit, the biodiversity in the rainforest, this is all about research skills. So right now we're learning about ecosystems, and the first one that we're starting with tomorrow is the rainforest. Our huge thing is biodiversity in the rainforest, and we're using research to do that. So we're using only nonfiction text, we're using um, websites and videos and drawing that evidence to support it. So all of what they're doing in second quarter will basically be a zoomed in version of what we're doing in science this quarter. So I'm really hoping that will support them through reading. So that's my goal, is to really help them have the background before they go into reading it, because then maybe they'll be more interested in it. Third quarter, I was hoping to have the same effect. We study weather um, and weather patterns. So when we do fourth quarter EL with the impact of natural disasters, I'm hoping they'll understand and connect to that weather, how big a hurricane like Hurricane Florence really is, what and we don't really do earthquakes, so it's not going to be a direct relation. Um, but that is something that we can talk about how the earth and the weather patterns affect that. So I'm hoping that that's going to really engage students, make them excited, and, and be able to make those connections back to science. Um, while I'm talking about that, just really quickly, because it will be coming up before before we know it, we're going to have um, two science field trips this year, and so both of those are going to hopefully focus on ecosystems. Um, we might have one more geared towards the rainforest to, again, fit the EL curriculum. But um, that's something that we can look forward to and really think about how can we connect our field trips back to what we're doing in reading and science. Um, one thing that I would
would love support in school and at home with is science inquiry. So the big thing with inquiry is that it's student driven. And a lot of what I do with my curriculum is not student driven because we do have standards and testing. And so there's a lot that we need to do as a class. And I do everything I can to really let the students drive what we're doing in science while relating it back to what we're doing in our other classes. Um, but anything that you have at home or ideas that your child comes up with that you can do at home, kind of like a science fair project, but also that you know you think can relate to what we're doing in class, um, is please let me know or let me know how I can support you. Because science is something that we really want to develop more and that we feel once they get to middle school, they get so much more support in science. So this is a great year to start that. Um, but any way that your child comes up with a question, it is thinking of like, I really want to know this. How do I figure this out? My students have been asking a ton of questions about plants that we just planted, and I hope that you've heard about them. But um, we have planted some plants to begin an eco column with a terrarium and an aquarium. And it's they are, they're wanting to know so much. And so that's what I mean. Like Once they have that idea, how can we drive and kind of change what we're learning? So if you want to do that at home, they can come up with ways to test what they're asking and find out more. Um, to use the data, that's the big thing that we focus on this year. We craft and analyze data, we present it to each other. And so that's something that I hope they can start to develop now. And if there's anything that you do at home or um, ideas that you want to help with here, please let me know. All right, math, if you haven't um, gone to speak with Ms. Sawyer yet, we have a, a really, um, it's a similar math curriculum, but it's a new order. And so we're really working hard to, same thing with reading. Um, have whatever we can to support that. And so the ways that you guys can really help at home, no matter what your child's skills are right now, is all those core math skills, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, always need that fluency. Um, and playing math games, I'm gonna show you some now if you haven't seen them yet, and preparing your, your child for assessments. And Ms. Arna will have some parent math classes that are really, really helpful. So she'll show you how to do the math skills at home that your, your children are doing. Um, and any other learning opportunities you want at home, if you want to, if your child's really interested in what we're doing in our EL curriculum, like I said, we have a ton of books to support, and you're welcome to look through these. They're organized by category, um, and hopefully more to come as well. So if you want to continue your own book study and find out more about human rights and talk about them at home, that's a really big current event issue as well. So that's something that we have had amazing discussions in here, but that I really welcome you to have at home. Um, any type of research related to science, current events, social studies, current events, um, just stuff that they can bring to the classroom from home and from outside of our building. And then coding was a big skill that our students have developed the last few years, and we were able to purchase some robots to present what they learned. So the students would code these robots, and the robots can talk or show things or turn and, and present something. So I would love for the students to come up with ideas to do that, and they are always welcome to have a chance to present that in class and get our students excited about that skill, especially going to Reedy Creek, a lot of our students might find some interest in that. So I know I do a lot of talking. Um, this is really just kind of an overview. I'm gonna show you some math stuff if you're interested. I know some of you have already seen it if you went to Ms. Zoigner. But is there anything else that I can, because I really wanna know what, what you're interested in and what you can, uh, Into it to right. where it's understandable yeah. for him because, like, math he loves, yeah. English he can do, but yeah. science is something that he's kind of iffy about. Yeah, and just to encourage him there, like, what are things that I could do to kind of help put that out more in that area as well? Yeah, well, actually, um, and I can um, support maybe one on one some of the specific things that you want to talk about, but the, the inquiry is that big thing that gets students to ask, and because I have to teach them certain things, I don't like I said, I don't always get that opportunity. But really what they, they should be able to do is like, you might talk about something and then that question comes, well, why are the clouds that way? Or why, why does this happen outside? Or um, that's where you take that exploration and then you can start to look at, okay, here's a skill about using data. Like we talked about evidence in the book. How do you use evidence in science to support that? How do we support that we know everything that's happening in those plants right now and how that contributes to our ecosystem? 
So when they ask that question, maybe you kind of give them the question a little bit, then you can drive that way. And um, one example, just from for a much lower elementary level, is talking about magnets. Like if you just have some curiosity, there's magnets on the fridge, and like, oh, this magnet moves a lot closer to this one, and letting the kids kind of just set that up, that question, and then you guys can play around and explore and talk about, well, let's test how many paper clips this one picks up, and let's, so those are just some easy ways to just develop those skills that they may not get until fifth grade, and so it's hard to have this high expectation of um, using data and, and asking questions when they haven't had that opportunity as much. So it is, it's new, so it might be scary or unsure if you like it yet, but um, having the, yeah, the question, and, and it's okay to manipulate that question at first, that you know, you know, you want them to ask that question to find out more. Um, but if there's like a specific area that maybe you want your child to be more interested in, then there's definitely some resources you can look at. Thanks for asking that. I love when parents get excited about science. <laughs> Alright, well, you're welcome to look at some of these books if you'd like to. Um, and, and some of the work that we've done in Yale. And I'm going to show some of this math work as well. So if you want to find out a little more about math fluency and games at home, please come on over and I'll show you that. But thank you so much for coming and finding out about our curriculum. Thank you. Yeah. She has more over there, too. Um, but that is information is kind of just an overview of what we're doing in math this year and what they've done so far, and then some information about how to conduct her. And some of these games really work on multiplication and volume, which is their next big unit. Um, but they, you know, there's games you can just use, like beans and rocks and popsicle sticks. And so if that's something you're interested in, she has extras of those over there, too, that you can grab and take home. And um, just turn across the hall 22 or 3. And um, you know it doesn't hurt any student to practice more application skills. So to make a game out of it, it's just that much more fun. But, yeah. And then all of these things over here in the bags too. Um, so we're working on function tables and coordinate cards. We can make more copies of these to send home. It's really no problem at all. But again, like every one of these skills that we do this year, I mean, just call it a game before dinner or something and spend a few minutes. Um, this is one that they did. They made their name, so they've seen this before being able to analyze a coordinate grid, using multiplication to use a function table. Okay, so this one, so this one you're gonna, so you can use any marker and you're looking for products. So like it's so three times six, so what are all the products of three times six? So 18 and then another product of, so you can do three and six, you can do, they're starting to do multiple numbers, so today I think it was three times five times two, so how can you get all of those? So you can make it more complicated or um, basic and then you could do factors, so there's a lot that you can do with that too. So again, like you should just use some dried beans. So anything like that is easy, and we have more than enough of these. That's cool. These games, you know, there's multiple games you can do, but you can flip sticks for multiplication, division, um, making multi-digit numbers to multiply because that's a skill that they need to start developing. This one we're working on volume. There's area, so they're starting volume now, um, and area was a concern, just basic area, because when we start to do composite shapes with, we put two shapes together, they have to be able to break it apart. So that's when we're going to get that basic information, we can start making it more challenging. 